All right, so we're going to go back to this morning's Georgia ruling. Joining us now is CBS News investigative producer Daniel Claydman. Did I say your name properly? Claydman. Claydman. Really yeah. Close, no, I was just about to be like, I, no, I'm not saying it right. But I'm glad you're here, uh, Daniel. Uh, you've been following uh, this entire. You've been following the whole trial, um, and we know that you have a number of sources inside the DA's office. Um, so, what have you learned? What's the reaction been? What What's going on? Well, look, I have not spoken to them since uh, this decision came out because I can guarantee you they are sitting in a room, they are studying and analyzing every word of this decision mm -hmm. before they uh, decide to make any public comments or, or talk about it at all. And of course, uh, they have a decision to make, which is uh, what happens to Nathan Wade, the special prosecutor who was romantically involved with Fonnie Willis. <laughs> I think we know that that is not a difficult choice for them. I think right. it is pretty clear uh, that he uh, will be gone, will be removed from the case. Um, how they do this um, is, I, I, don't, I don't know for sure. Uh, they may want to let him do it with some dignity, uh, step aside himself, um, but he will be gone um, and uh, Fonnie Willis will move on as uh, not only the, the district attorney uh, overseeing this case, but my prediction is uh, Fonnie Willis will be in the courtroom in this case. She will try significant pieces of this case. She mm. is the most talented uh, trial lawyer in that office. Uh, and um, she has some work to do to rehabilitate her reputation. And my gut tells me that the way she will do this is not by going out and giving a lot of press conferences, by, but by doing it in the courtroom. Right. So one of the things uh, that was a key contention of the defense was that uh, Fonnie Willis uh, had a financial interest in extending this case uh, because her romantic partner uh, was brought into it. Um, but here's what Judge McAfee uh, said in rejecting that notion. I'm going to quote it here. The district attorney has not in any way acted in conformance with the theory that she arranged a financial scheme to enrich herself. That's yeah. the, but, but there are other things that he did call her out on. And I wonder if yeah. you can break that down for First us. First of all, I'm glad you read that because I think from the very beginning it was clear to a lot of legal experts that that theory was really strained. Mm. The idea that she entered into a corrupt bargain with Nathan Wade uh, so and, and to drag out this case for money, uh, so, for, for money so that she could go <laughs> on, on, dates. A, yeah, for uh, dates. Yeah. on a bunch of dates yeah. uh, seemed um, s sort of absurd. Um, uh, but the, the judge is very tough on her. And some of the language, which, uh, you know, I, I, I jotted down, um, he, he calls out her tremendous lapse uh, in judgment, uh, her unprofessional manner uh, of testimony um, which was, during, these, I, you know, during these hearings. On one hand, I'm trying to understand, Daniel, because we all watched it, and I, I just thought to myself, on something so high profile, I get it. You feel like you're being unfairly yeah. maligned. You feel like you, as a black woman, are not getting a fair shake. But then why go in and give people more ammunition, for lack of a better word, to use against you by approaching it in the way that, that she did? By, you know, the she comment about vodka, I don't drink wine, I drink right. vodka. All these, like, sort of weird aside. That because, because that is Fonnie Willis. Huh. <laughs> and Fonnie, and I spent a lot of time in the course of reporting a book with my colleague Mike Isikoff, uh, Find Me the Votes, on this case. We spent, we interviewed her a half a dozen times, and we saw that side to her. Mm. And, you know, she is, she can be fiery. Uh, she is a force of nature. Uh, she is strategic and smart, but there's also a touch of arrogance in Fonnie Willis. You know, the, the kind of thing that you sometimes see in trial lawyers mm. of her caliber. Mm -hmm. So that is Fonnie Willis. She is not going to change. I, I think she is going to uh, get her house in order mm. after all of this. And at this point, she's going to have to be Caesar's wife. She's going to have to be above reproach. She mm. can't make any mistakes. Uh, but in terms of one, some of the things that the judge said, uh, you know, I think the thing that, that really stood out for me is at one point he used this devastating phrase. He talked about how an odor of mendacity remains mm. around this case. And that is a sort of indirect way uh, of saying, you know, were people lying under oath in, in, in this case? And was, was, was Fonnie Willis perhaps not truthful? And then at one point he talks about, you know, at the end of the day, I don't have to make all of these credibility calls to make my decision here. But there are other uh, institutions um, and organizations out there that can look into this. She talked about the bar. She talked about the uh, uh, ethics, various ethics committees. Um, so some of those questions are still going to be lingering, and Fonnie Willis is going to have to uh, continue to 
uh, uh, battle to, to rehabilitate herself. And just really quickly, you know, a part of the criticism was that Nathan Wade wasn't experienced enough to take this position as special prosecutor. But Fonnie Willis had looked for a few, looked for a while to find someone willing to take this job and was turned down a couple of times. How hard is it going to be to find a replacement? Look, I, I think that the uh, district attorney's office has realized that this day might be coming and that uh, Nathan Wade likely was going to be leaving. So mm -hmm. I think they have a plan in place, mm -hmm. whether it's to bring someone from the outside who's already come in or someone uh, who's already been on the team. And there are a number of very talented uh, trial lawyers uh, on their team already. So uh, one point on that, which is that uh, Nathan Wade was never going to be the lead trial lawyer in this case. His skill was as a behind-the-scenes player, as a manager and organizer of the case. He ran the grand jury process. By all accounts, he did it extremely well. And, you know, the, the idea that he was uh, the, 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 leader, the lead of this case, which meant that he was going to be in the courtroom trying it, that was never going to actually happen. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but I do, one last question, I guess, and, you know, it's like when you are a kid, your parents tell you you should be a lawyer because lawyers make a lot of money, right? And you know the law, and so you can use it. It struck me that the 750000 more than $750,000 that Nathan Wade had earned, I thought to myself, these are public officials. That sounds more to me like corporate lawyer money, but maybe not. But I have no idea how... That, like, that's actually below the going rate. Is that it, 750 it is, it grand? Was, it's, it's too... It, oh, you know, over yeah, two and a half years, whatever it was, yeah, yeah. two hundred fifty dollars an hour. Uh, that, that's, that, that's that's low, that is that is that's not a lot of money for what lawyers can make in private practice. And if it. you feel like you have to bring in someone from private practice, you've got to pay yeah. uh, pay that much. And and the fact of the matter is, um, he testified, and I think there was evidence to support this that he he did more work than he actually billed for oh, because wow. it, there was a cap mm -hmm. on what he could bill. Yeah, I think oh, it's a, he could only bill for, is it 40 or 60 hours a week or whatever? 60, but, I think right, it was, Right, yeah. exactly, yeah. So, Fascinating, go. really interesting. Daniel yeah. Clydeman, uh, great to have you. Welcome to CBS News. Oh, thank it's you. Thank you. Great to be here. Yeah, it's really great for us.